Radio in five, four, three. And we are back, folks, here on the Michigan Insider Sports Talk 1050 WTKA online at WTK.com. Sam Webb, Mr. Ira Weintraub on the other side. And joining me as they do every single week, we go inside the round table with the MGO Blog Roundtable crew. Uh, with the crew from MGO Blog. So starting off first with the man that started it all at the blog, Brian Cook. Brian, good morning. How are you? Good. Is John L. Davis coming or not? No. He is not. Okay. He is not. That was, um, you know, I was making the rounds on, on socials. I know, and I know Davis uh, kind of co-signed it uh, some. He was uh, he had talked to some of the same folks in those circles. And, and there were FAU people who were thinking it was legit as well. But I heard from a irrefutable, <laughs> unmistakable source. He said, no, he's, he's not coming in this week. Uh, I don't know. If, I, I didn't, I wasn't able to check into if that meant ever, uh, but certainly not coming in this weekend. So, um, but we'll get into that shortly. Uh, also, Seth Fisher, how are you doing this morning? Great. He told me John L. Smith isn't coming this week. John L. Smith. He's never come. John L. John L. Davis. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> Not How do you name yourself John L? That's that that that's just asking for this to happen. <laughs> all right. And Craig Ross. Craig, how you doing this morning? You know, fine. You know, John L. Smith was probably my favorite all-time Michigan State coach. I mean, uh he was he was great. So we need more John L. Smith actually in the world of coaching, but that's for different story. I'm doing fine. I'm surprised, I'm surprised you didn't say Clarence Biggie Munn, the former Michigan assistant that you were pals with back in the day. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, you, but when you Biggie became... Our, all together. He was a very early rapper, and, you know, that was... Yeah, I mean, I, I think we can we can kind of start off in with talking a little poor. We'll we'll round into talking about the the spring game or previewing the spring mm-hmm. game and some of the rumblings. Uh, but let's start off talking portal, Brian, since um kind of kick things off talking about John L. He's not coming in. Uh, but you got uh you you got some other major targets that are coming in for them. Trey Donaldson uh is a major target They're trending with him. Um you got um Roddy Gale who's coming in. They're trending with him. Um, you got the guy from App State whose name is escaping me at the moment. It'll come to me shortly. Justin Abrams, I yeah, think. Or, yeah, he he's coming. Or Absom, Justin Absom. Yeah, he's ABS coming in. Uh, and then you're coming off of some other guys that they're trending with. I'm gonna have to get rid of all of my bad Scotty Pippen commentary. Which I listen, I didn't embellish Scotty Pippen. <laughs> Not being a top 50 guy in NBA history. I, I okay. I won't say it too often, but he's not in the fold yet. I could talk bad about Scottie Pippen until Justin Pippen is committed, right? Isn't that okay, Brian? Uh, can I get a cut some slack there? I mean, if you I mean you gotta get it out today. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I thought you were past this. Sir. I just I can't help myself, man. I can't help myself. Whatever. I mean, between himself. Jordan on the uniforms and Pippen on the back of the uniform, like what are we doing here, right? Like, <laughs> See, but I've been wearing Jordans. I've been able to sort of <laughs> segment my my fandom I'm, in that way. I'm kind of interested in the Pippen wearing the Jordan yeah, brand. That's gonna be tough. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be tough, but Brian, I'm just you don't have to go over every single guy, but maybe the guys that you've watched, uh, your thoughts on their game, uh, Vlad Golden, for instance. I don't know if you watch Pippen at all or any of the guys that are coming in this weekend. I mean, who have you kind of really had an eye on and, and scouted a little bit? What do you think about this this um portal crop that that Dusty's chasing at the moment? Well, uh, so Nobody looks like a like a slam dunk except Golden or Davis. Um, the two FAU guys look like slam dunk, very good players. The other guys are all kind of like they have potential. They haven't really gotten there yet. Um, so you know you're not looking at high usage efficient players for the most part. You're looking at guys who have holes in their game. Like you know, Gale shot 29 percent from three last year, and if he can get up to 35 percent. You know, that's a, a real, it's a very good player. But, you know, sort of a team-wide uh, terrible three-point shooting season from Ohio State is why Chris Holman got fired. You know, Trey Donaldson split time with Aiden Holloway 
um, who's also supposed to be on campus this weekend, according to Eric Bossy, I believe. Yeah, so, I, don't, I don't see that happening. Yeah, so it just felt like like the both the Auburn point guards hit the portal, and then Michigan starts getting crystal balls for the one who's not Aiden Hallway, and you're like, what's going on here? There's is there some connection between Trey Donaldson and Dusty May? Because it just felt extremely random that like he didn't even take a visit yet. He didn't even announce a visit. He gets in the portal and the next day it's like, yeah, that guy's going to Michigan. It just, <laughs> yeah, I have to, um, I do know that things got farther down with Trey. Uh, they, they got started first with, with Trey. I don't know all the, all the details as to why I know why people automatically move to Aiden. He has such strong uh, family ties but I, I think it's a matter of the, that's a, the guy that that they went with or they got connected with first. And I, don't ask me why, but they, this seems to be an either or scenario where I don't think that that, you know, they want to be in a position where they're sharing time again, knowing that you're going to share time with someone. But I just don't get sense. They want to share time with each other. I don't want to get into I don't even know all the weird. reasons why. Yeah, I mean that was such a weird team. They they had five, they, they had two five man teams. It was like Craig Ross's nightmare. They played, <laughs> yeah, they played ten yeah. guys at least a third of the time. Yeah, so, I hate they that. They played five that guys with nightmare. each other and another five guys with each other. So like the backups were were just like a second team. And they're like, okay, round two. It was like Michigan's defense last year. Just like, all right, here here comes Kenneth Grant and the and the second Wonder Boys. So so yeah. Um, I did hear, and this might be the the caveat to what Eric was talking about. I think his sister was going to be coming to um, was going to be making her way to camp, that, and there's a chance that he might he he might be traveling with her. So I had heard that, but as far as an expected visitor for Michigan for Michigan basketball, his is not a name that I was that I've been um, that's been shared as being on the list of according to sources. So. You know, you know, the jibber jabber all, all over the place is very curious. Uh, I keep hearing uh, things like, oh, no, this guy is off the board because Michigan's already full at that position. <laughs> and then and then I look at what they've got at this point, and it's like Darrell Brooks, so, Will Cheddar, and maybe George Washington. That's so I, it. I think I think that I no, think maybe. that Dusty and crew. Mm -hmm. I think that they have a really good idea of four or five guys that they're going to get. Okay. I think that there are, there's maybe a guy, certainly at least one guy that they're on that I think they're going to get that, you know, just kind of moving around in silence. That'll Other than Golden? Shooting. Other than Golden. Golden uh, Pippen and, and, and Donaldson seem like the guys who are in the boat so far. Yeah, and, I, and there's another guy that that they're on who hasn't been listed on any. Even we didn't even put him on our list because he's just mm -hmm. moving around quietly. Uh, but Michigan is trending very much with him as well. So I, I want to say there are like five, like five guys, and all runs together that they are probably like ninety five percent gonna get. Like Golden is in that boat. My my interpretation, my read on Golden is like he's essentially. They're going to get them, but all these guys want to go through like the draft advisory board process. And I think that okay. that's, it. but you kind of have an idea what they're going to say. Right. And so I, I think this is my take on it. I think that's the only thing that would be sort of as a hurdle mm -hmm. uh, in that particular instance, if you want to even call it that. So they got, I think that's the deal. Someone just asked, John Walls just asked in the chat, hey, when are we going to get some commitments in basketball? And football, we're dealing with basketball right now, and I just think it's a, it's a you're going to see like a drumbeat of guys coming pretty, uh, pretty consistently here uh, in the coming days and and definitely the coming weeks. So yeah, you asked uh, who we like from. I mean, it's hard when you're looking at 20 guys to go through their tape and and decide, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I like him, I don't like him, I, and so the guy. I, I have looked at Vlad uh, Golden a lot because I'm hoping that he'll be here. I kind of disagree a bit with Brian on this one. I've watched now five or six of his games. He plays very little drop coverage. He can switch. 
Uh, he did in the Northwestern game. He played a lot of flat hedging and, and soft hedging in the Northwestern game. Now, the Northwestern game was terrible from an offensive point of view. FAU was awful on offense, but they were pretty good on defense, and a part of that was golden. And, and so I do like that in his game. I like his ability to pass out of the post. Uh, I like the fact that he has two hands. Uh, he catches the ball, which... You know, I still think that, you know, speaking of odd, you've got uh, uh, Terrace going to UConn. Is that a is that firm? Uh, Terrace at UConn. Maybe maybe they can. I think his problem is his eyesight, and they and if, if they get that straightened out, maybe he can catch the ball. And uh, but uh, but I like I like Golden a lot. I also, I looked real quick this morning at this guy, Justin Absom, and I don't know, he's a 6'9 guy from App State. I think he's going to be around this weekend, I, or if not, he's soon. Made, he's made, I didn't quite know if they were going to get to him. I had heard his name, wasn't sure they were going to get to him, but uh, it started making the rounds yesterday Yeah, that he would that he would be in. So He, I mean, if, he, if I mean, that, he can walk, play D. If you want I'm Ben Wall, If you want Ben Wallace, yeah, that's, that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I down think to that's the free throw percentage. Yeah, that that's a fair a fair comparison. He um but he really he really really is good as a defender. He's a phenomenal shot blocker. Um and I see some offensive potential with him. He's not going to shoot the ball from outside, but he he does have a nice left hand. He he does have some post moves. Um you know, better footwork say than Terrace. And uh so there's certainly some potential there. He's a sophomore. I don't know what that implies on the on the portal, but um, for Michigan, but but I I I would take a shot at him. I mean he he's a guy who could play some backup center and and could also you could work. This is a player you can work with uh, to to make him a a decent offensive player. From what I from what I saw, he's never going to be a shooter. That mm-hmm. one ain't happening. Uh, I mean, but, is, is he an either or with Wolf? Because I mean, if you're going to bring in Golden, and yeah, you have two centers, are you, you going to bring him in as a four? Or like, what's the plan with that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, no, I, you're not it's, you're, you're not bringing in Wolf as a four. He cannot no, no, no. defend yeah. as a four. Like that's that's the happen. yeah. You're right. That's the issue with Wolf at the four. I mean, he can play offense at the four because he can shoot the ball. He's a thirty five percent three, and he he can take the ball to the basket. Uh, he has a what you can good defend, handle. I, I I think that's correct. I mean, the problem is, can can he? It would be few a, a few teams. Maybe you could play him at the four. Guys, teams that don't have mobile four or fours, but um, yeah, that's probably right. Yeah, an interesting name, and I'm curious you guys think is uh, you know John L. Davis was like the he's like the he's the dream guy for a lot of fans, and I I just get the sense that that dream is fizzling. Uh, mm-hmm. But the the guy that's going to take his place, uh, quite obviously, is uh, Aiden Mahaney from from St. Mary's. There's a lot yeah. of folks that are like, "Yeah, well, this this." Well, so, what do you think about Aiden? Well, I mean, for one, like the whole world reached out to him, like <laughs> like Texas, Kentucky, Arkansas, like Duke. So, I wouldn't necessarily bank on Justin Joyner getting Mahaney to Michigan immediately. And also, honestly, I don't like his game. Really? He never gets to the rim. Yeah. He he's he takes a lot of iffy shots. Like the tournament loss to Grand Canyon, he was like over a billion. And like I just don't see it. Like I see him like like he can sit in the corner and shoot threes for Michigan, and that's fine. But just in terms of like his efficiency overall and his upside, I'm just like Gale is a guy who like, he had 21 dunks last year. You know, and a lot of them were super explosive. And, you know, he shot pretty well from three as a freshman, albeit on low volume. If Roddy Gale fixes his three point shot, that's an NBA player. So you yeah. like Roddy Gale more than you like Mahaney? Yeah. Like me, Mahaney, me too. I agree with that. All right. So like, let me, let me uh, use the, this is another opportunity mm-hmm. to put the, uh, to put the NIL bat signal up. Try to do it in the fall with, with, with JJ. Wasn't quite heard at that time. But, you know, the, the NIL support for, for Dusty is there to an extent. Uh, I think it, it, it has 
responded to the change, uh, but I think more is needed. I think more is needed. So I, I think more support is needed. I want to, I want to highlight just how far the collective support for NIL has come in six or seven months' time. It's like night and day. Uh, it's, it's there's before the championship. We'll, we'll use we'll use JJ as the like the line of demarcation. Right there's there's before JJ and after JJ and after JJ is a totally different scheme ball of wax when it comes to football NIL with the current players so really really stepped up man got to have basketball uh you know come even farther it's come a ways but but fellas uh the the NIL money cannon needs to fire even bigger uh for for Dusty to to really get done what he needs to get done on the uh, on the portal trail and so far. It's firing, but it's not a done deal. More needs to happen. Well, Sam, I know everyone's seeing our Kickstarter that's over uh, half a million <laughs> right now for, uh, for for Victor's, our championship book, which ends, by the way, on Saturday. So if you want to get in on that, you better get in now. Um, but we also have to use that money to make the books. So I can't just kind of give that to <laughs> just now. <Yeah. laughs> so, but listen, I think... I think as the need uh, becomes more obvious and as you see some, some success, the success that is that I think you're going to realize over the, the recruiting trail, uh, the portal recruiting trail over the next, I don't know, one or two weeks, you know, maybe that will help garner some more momentum uh, as far as NIL support is, is, is concerned to try to close things out here uh, in, our, in a rousing fashion. Cause this is ball. I mean, look, we, let's be frank here. We know that's a lot of what determines how much success you have as far as the portal is concerned. I, I had a, a long conversation with uh, with a guy who's been very involved with the NIL at Michigan. Um, and honestly, if they could get, go out and get John Hell Davis done, whatever that costs, they would probably raise the money to get it afterwards. <laughs> it's the the, the excitement. The excitement has to be there. And you the it feeds on how many you know if if it looks like Michigan can get those guys I think that some do, certain donors are probably more likely to step up once they see these things happening. Yeah, and I don't want to make I don't want to be totally insensitive. I'm totally spinning out of somebody else's pocket. I I get that. Mm -hmm. I do wonder. I do wonder, and I I don't know if we talked about this last week, guys. Is there enough to go around? I do. I do have that thought. Uh, can you really sustain uh, NIL contributions uh, for or for football, basketball, women's basketball, stepping to the table now? Uh, certainly you have we other had, that are going to be tapping into the same donors. Uh, how deep does the well go? And is it deep enough on the basketball side specifically uh, to, to really make Michigan the kind of player that I think as we look at the football side of things, you know, people look at, at at different like Keandre Lambert Smith is like I oh, don't even try. He's gonna. <laughs> I, I think Michigan can be in. They are in those races now. It's like not, like not a non-starter anymore. Can we get to the point with basketball where, where it's like that? Do you think? I we had this conversation a year know. ago. Sorry, I I mean the it's not just the teams that we're supporting. They're supporting Mott. They're supporting. Right the university of michigan like right. the, the the same donor list we're talking about that we're spinning out of their pockets they have priorities that are not necessarily sports mm -hmm. i'm sensitive to tell you were saying brian well i mean it's i don't it's hard to tell right like i can't like a lot of this revolves around the very limited numbers of extremely wealthy people who are mm -hmm. idiosyncratic right <laughs> like so there's mm -hmm. some guy who donated eighty three thousand dollars to the edsbs uh charity drive who's a michigan guy and like that kind of money is different from like the kind of money that most people can spend and so it really just comes down to like do you have the guy who's the billionaire because he sells chicken at <laughs> arkansas mm -hmm. right and like it, it feels like historically michigan's extremely wealthy people have not been pushing in the nil space right mm -hmm. like there are a lot of programs where it's like okay we like the guys who own the car dealerships and or the 
pump brothers at Kansas are like, ah, well, it's we got to go full bore on this. It doesn't feel like Michigan has historically been that way. So mm -hmm. the interesting comment was Stephen Ross, who certainly does have this sort of money. And his comment was, hey, I ain't paying college kids. <laughs> I, wait, 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 wait. And, so, and I'm, I'm going to pay. How, I'm going to. Wait, wait yeah. how do you know that? Because he said it. Who do who, who, who it was did. published? Published it, where? Yeah, I saw it published. Uh, I think, and even in Sam uh, under uh, Michigan Insider, it, it was a okay, quote published by Stephen Ross. That's saying, not. That's not something. That's not an article. It's not a quote. It's. It was a, no. It was a quote. It, it was it's, an. No, it's not. It's a guy on a message board just talking. All right. Okay. I don't necessarily. Yeah, I, I don't think we that. should. Uh, we should not ascribe. If that's if, uh, if it's not true, it's not true. So, yeah. like, I just don't trust that source very, okay. very much. Okay. And I, I don't think that we should take that necessarily very seriously. Then I'll leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Uh, but but it does underscore one thing that you don't have to see quote, quoted. I've had conversations with donors that are like, look, um, how often are we going to be doing this? Yeah, I mean, it is ridiculous, right? Because the yeah. University of Michigan has one of the most profitable athletic departments in the country and i pay for tickets i watch the games so like i'm already making that bottom line higher and then you know as a fan you get hit up for more and it's just a really it's a ridiculous situation because it's not like you know the green bay packers are going to their fans and they're like hey guys we really need to pay these guys so <laughs> yeah you need to pay us beyond like the tickets you're buying, the the merch you're buying, and stuff like that. It's and it, it is a situation that's ridiculous. Yeah, and that's, so that's that's kind of baked in to what my approach would be. Is like, look, I, I know we're we asked a couple months ago for for football, now we're asking for basketball, and we're probably gonna be back again uh, asking for football again, and and women's basketball that we're asking for now. This is a temporary we are going to be paying the players in the in the near future but for now for now this is what we need to do to compete it won't be forever it's not like you're going to be coming back year after year after year in perpetuity it's just a window because i i, I you talk to people across the landscape in administration and they say this is just around the corner where we're going to be paying these guys and so they're they're already kind of making moves and kind of changing thought process processes around how are you going to execute this? How, you know, who, who's going to stat, who's going to sign value. And these are all kinds of conversations that are being had to make me think that they know is right around the corner, but you got to compete right now. And that's kind of Dusty's take. I got to compete right now. I got to go get some players right now. We, I, I know we'll worry about the asks down the line, down the line. I got this ask right now where we got to feel the team or put on the court a team that can compete immediately. And the only way you do that is, yeah, we got to have a great coach staff. We got to have NIL too. In a match, I mean, in there's, a there's a lot of, like, as Brian said, you're getting into some uh, quixotic individuals sometimes. And yeah. some of the, uh, some of the factors that affect this are like, you know, did a major donor get a contract this year from the government or not, right? Like every four years, this one guy gets a NASA contract. When he does, he gets a lot of money, and some of it goes towards Michigan. He's more than happy to, you know, buy things. Last time he bought benches, but like, and he'd be happy to have pay, help pay for players, but he doesn't have the contract right now, and he's a little worried about the political situation. Like there's a lot of factors that like you cannot affect at all, and that's just kind of the reality of things. Sometimes you get lucky and there's a guy. Sometimes you get you you're unlucky and like there's just not as much in the pool of people who are willing to pay right now because and I don't think it's just hey we've hit them up too many times or you know it's they don't understand the situation. Michigan these people are not dummies. Well, but they're, let, me, let me let me yeah. emphasize another thing. Dusty is not one of those coaches who's just saying I need I need I need Mm -hmm. He's out there hustling it too. Like if he's not working in the portal, having guys in, he's meeting with donors. You know, he's not flying to see. He could be on the road seeing twenty, but not even doing it. Not even looking at twenty five. Flying to see donors. Lunch with donor this week. On the phone with a donor the next. Like he that twenty five to thirty percent. 
that he mentioned, I, I think right now, quite frankly, it's probably 50-50 at, at the mm-hmm. moment when it comes to if I'm not recruiting the portal, I'm recruiting donors. So he is not just sitting there saying, hey, I need NIL. He's he's working for it himself too, which has to be the case in the short. Your coaches have got to be fundraisers more now than ever before. I sense some, yeah. some sadness about that, but that's just how it has to be. Well, I mean, those jar- jobs weren't hard before, but... <laughs> <laughs> now you're yeah. now you're throwing like man, you already got to recruit, and now you got to go and be a fundraiser too. It's it's uh it, it's it's going to make it harder to compete for coaches with the uh, with the pros because you're you're widening the gap of uh of life expectancy if you if you do this job for too long. And I think that's we're seeing that. I think you've seen some coaches leave the leave the game who don't want to have to adjust to the new reality. It's a and like you said, it's a temporary reality, but. I don't think it's just around the corner because I don't think that the people who are in charge of this have the incentive to change it other than they feel like they might get forced. Because right now, as long as they can get the donors to pay the players, they don't have to. See, but uh, I guess to me, motivation is not a big of concern because there's this inevitability to it that they all realize. I mean, look at the case. NCAA just came out. You say, okay, everyone transfer. You're immediately eligible. If you're if you're academically eligible, you can transfer thirty times. Doesn't matter. You can play. They got forced into it. Yeah, uh, but it was like instant. Like they they got sued like what three four months ago, and boom, the rule has changed. I'm not saying that they're gonna be paying players in three or four months, but I sense that you're right. They want to maintain the status quo, but they know it's impossible. It, it, they're going to have to change. They're going to have to pay the players. It's a, a matter of figuring out how, and they got to do it quick, fast, and in a hurry. With that, what's quick, fast, in a hurry? Next few years. Next few years. I, I, I think that they 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 don't know the how. They don't know which. They haven't made. There's a one court case that might do it, but they're they're looking at. And this is from my conversation with the NIL guy last week. Um, they're they're trying to figure out when it's going to happen, but they're also and I don't want to get too much into politics, but they're looking at the political situation. They think they might have an out if certain people get in power that you can pay to get whatever you want, whether it's right or wrong. Mm. And that's that's part of the conversation right now. And it's I, yeah. I I'm not saying I'm saying I'm not going to if I was a donor, I'm not going to bank on three years from now the system being settled. Well, that I think what that will result in is them just not cutting the check anymore. But if from from the coaching perspective and the program perspective, uh, from an athletic department perspective, to to the extent that they are trying to co- convince donors, hey, give to this too. Uh, I think part of the pitch is, hey, listen, no, we're coming right back after we were just here, which is not typical of a fundraising situation. Right, you fundraise for a building, or you fundraise for a. Co- you aren't necessarily coming back year after year for the same thing. You are in this instance, and I think what you're telling them is, guy, fellas, ladies, it's not going to be like this forever. That we're only talking about this being a, a cup, you know, next couple of year scenario. We feel strongly that it's going to pivot, it's going to change, and if it doesn't. Then you can react accordingly, but you got to get it done right now. I mean, that that was my major gripe before. It's like, okay, yeah, this is not sustainable, and the rules are going to change. But what are you doing in the interim? If you wait for the change, you're going to get left behind. And so I, I sense that there's a, there's been a realization on that front, mm-hmm. and we can certainly see it in football. My question is, is there enough to also see it in any other sports? Uh, I, I have a hard time seeing this change coming th- within the next couple of years within the next three years yeah i'm i mean i i mean it you're right and and in terms of people who are donating well yeah uh they're going to be asking you're going to be hitting me every year and i think the answer is probably well yeah well that's not, and that's not my that's just talking to to, mm-hmm. to people on the on the uh the mm-hmm. side of uh i don't even want to just call it athletic but just the the uh, the regent side, the administration side, just think that this is an inevit- inevitability here that 
in the next few years, that's what we'll see. Now, they might project. How, how is that going to happen? The NCAA? NCAA says we're not even enforcing NIL rules right now. <laughs> so all of a sudden, the NCAA is going to grab hold of this and, and, and create a new world order? I don't see it. So I think there's I, – I, I want to spend some time on football, uh, and we got to get to a yes. break. <laughs> I think that what, you, what you're going to see, Craig, is this is just not sustainable for the sport. I, you know, I, I agree. I agree. And what do I mean by that? You're, you're going to have people that just get fed up. I'm not even talking about the donor side. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the fan side. Yeah. Like they just get fed up with, I don't even know who's on my team. Uh, we, guys are getting in the portal and going back to the team they were on. I mean, that it, they're just all over the place transferring twice in the same within a couple of months span. You're going to lose fans if you if the, if that continues to be the case, and I think there's this there's this uh, existential crisis that's going to force them, whether it be litigation or just by the erosion of the fan base, that's going to force them to make some moves quicker than they ordinarily do. So we'll see, but we need to talk to talk some spring game. We'll do that on the other side here on the Michigan Insider on Sports Talk 1050 WTKA the ticket. Clear on the radio. All right. So, uh, on a we got to be careful of this topic, man. You, we'll, we'll just keep going for hours. I, know this, I wanted, wanted to pivot yeah. off of it, but I, yeah. I know this. I know yeah. this. I feel strongly that they have. You, we'll see a drumbeat of of commitments on the basketball side of things. I do have some special energy drinks. That man, how could you tell I had it this morning, Sheldon? <laughs> yeah, Sheldon. What is this? The the uh, Lani. Yeah, man. That's not the one he's talking about, Sam. Oh, no, 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 no. I see. I can't even. He he sent me some energy drinks. Um, it's a the the title of them is like a euphemism for kitty cat. That's the title of the of the uh of the drink. And so I was like, man, I can't even promote this, Sheldon. <laughs> My wife was like, what did he just send you in the mail? And that's why he sent it. <laughs> Speaking of things in the mail, thank you, Ruth. I got the plum cake. They're amazing. Yeah, so I forgot what I was even saying. Hell, Sheldon, you got me on the on the yep. uh on the energy three energy drink thing. Um was something about connected to money. Yeah, paying I, players. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're gonna see a, a steady drumbeat of commitments oh, over okay. the span of the next over the span of the next uh, week or two. And I think what the hope is, is that the excitement that that generates will sort of spur some more uh, NIL uh, excitement. Because you're right. I, 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 I don't know if it was you guys who said it or if it's someone in the chat. You know, the, the energy and excitement is a part of it. Yeah. Uh, and it's easier to, to uh, spur on the football side of things when they just won the freaking national championship, right? Uh, yeah, you got I, all these I mean, top players the, that are clearly top players. Easier to the football thing. It up. was we were holding back the dam, and that I think the Tuesday before the national championship game was when uh, the dam finally broke because we had a we had a block in there that that got removed. But yeah. the uh, and you're talking about the basketball commits. I'm saying like that will. If you can if you just make the promise to one guy, if it's well, if it's if you're close, don't necessarily have to have the money in the bank. Just make the promise, and then you can get that. Because yeah, you get in trouble with that, that though. Yeah, you, you get in uh, trouble with that. Making well, make, I mean, we're not going to go deliver. Texas A and M and promise a hundred million dollars more than we have. Yeah, but you, you got to be at it. You got to promise what you can. You know, you can deliver. Yeah. And so I, I don't, I don't sense that you'll see. I, I, I think the collectives are going to have um, – they're only going to offer what they have. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but I, I sense that if some excitement can be, you know, raised, then maybe that'll help them hit the number that they need to hit. So uh, spring game, fellas. Spring game around the corner. Uh, we'll get into this uh, deep, uh, in a deeper way when we go back live on air as well. Uh, but other than quarterback, are, go ahead. Are there any linemen still standing? <laughs> yeah, it's been a it's been a tough go of it that way. Uh, you glass half full perspective is they've been working depth, right? 
Uh, they, yeah. Have they? Because like we've gotten down to you know they there's like one sentence on Ike, and that's like the like, Ike one, and that's like the first time we've heard anything about that guy. Heard nothing about Are you about offensive line or defensive line. I thought you were defensive, talking about. Oh, I'm talking about defensive line. Offensive right. line. I mean, we're hearing. I, I'm I'm surprised Nathan Effaby's name came up behind uh, Jadis. Like, well, I'm trying to figure out what the depth chart is, and like, it doesn't sound that. like we have a second team right now. Yeah, well, I think some of the second teamers you're seeing in there. Oh, we'll get into this. I right, back in yeah. when, Ira? Back in about 10 seconds, guys. Right, we'll we'll jump into it. I'll throw it to you guys one by one. I was gonna say I'd like to get the the freshman DTs on campus right now. And back on radio in five, four, three. And we are back, folks, here on the Michigan Insider Sports Talk 1050 WTKA online at WTK.com. MGO Blog Roundtable crew. Looking forward to the spring game, just like I am. So, Brian, we know you'll be watching quarterbacks. Everyone is going to be watching quarterbacks. But uh, positions that are most intriguing to you, and we touched on this a little bit before, but based on another week of of intel, rumblings out of practice, uh, what are you most anxiously anticipating seeing in the spring game on Saturday? Uh, Probably the offensive line. I mean, you're turning over basically that entire unit. And you're going to get reps that will be reps that are meaningful, right? Because Michigan, uh, at least when the first team defensive line is out there, like there's no question that those guys are players, right? So what I look for in a spring game is like, is there an established unit? And who are they going up against? And it's like, can I get a baseline for that that kind of performance? So, you know, when everything's changing and everything's up in the air, you really can't figure out anything. But in this particular case, I will. I mean, the only downside is like, well, what happens if Michigan's interior line gets destroyed by Mason Graham? I mean, does that is that necessarily bad? <laughs> right. Like, right. That's going to happen to everybody this year. Right. But like, if if they can hold up, if they can, if they can, you know, get some things done, uh, then I think that will be a good sign. So then that's probably the biggest question mark. Uh, outside a quarterback on the team is you know what you're going to get from the running backs. You know what you're going to get from the tight ends question marks, a wide receiver, but you have Tyler Morris back and you can rely on Colston Loveland to fill in some gaps. Um, but on the OL, you've got GOL hottie who, who played significantly two years ago. You have miles Hinton who started early this last year and then, you know, went to the bench and then you have guys who we have not seen in a Michigan uniform perform. So, there's going to be uh, some questions answered on Saturday. Yeah, uh, I think as we – because you were talking offensive line too, Seth, so it'll be a good segue to mm-hmm. you. I think it's – I don't know if these guys are going to play. Miles Hinton has been banged up in spring ball. Gio has been banged up in spring ball. Greg Crippen has been banged up in spring ball. Uh, I think those are three of your starters. Uh, along with Josh mm-hmm. Preeb, I think that gives you uh, your fourth. I think the biggest question mark is at the other tackle spot. Uh, where it looks to be uh, Gentry versus Percy uh, Mm -hmm. primarily. Uh, But I also think Michigan will be active uh, in in the portal to try to fortify the competition uh, along that front in the same way that they did last year. And then so who who are we talking about depth-wise after that? I think Raheem Anderson has been getting a lot of run. I think that he's in the mix. Uh, Percy and Gentry. I think at least on the gentry front, I think they think that if he's not outside, he can play inside uh, as well. And then you are kind of getting deeper into, okay, who else do you feel like you can count on on the on the inside, whether it's uh, Dom, who made the Mm -hmm. move last year, Dom Gadis. You you talked about native phobia, uh, Seth, so I can turn it over to you to ask you who are you or what are you most anxiously anticipating seeing in the spring game as well? Yeah, I mean, you you mentioned that we're seeing a whole lot of backups right now, and the backup list, you know, uh, John, you know, I I think that they've got seven guys or six guys right now. If you count Raheem, right, mm-hmm. then you're, and and we saw Percy he's play a little inside he's, last he's year too. He and the word is Raheem has had a good camp. Okay, um, so I mean, you got, and, and we've seen him a little bit before. I mean, I was hoping to see a uh, phobie. 
move past uh just because you're looking at like the ceilings of those mm-hmm. guys and and he's two years younger so i mean if you have a you have a red shirt freshman who's already in the two deep and they're talking about him and there were some nice things said about him at the beginning of the of the of camp then you're like okay looking down the line that's a guy i mean you're herring that's another guy that you, you know if you heard about him now you'd think he's a guy mm-hmm. on the upper side of that you know tristan bounds you're hearing him fighting with evan link and you're like eh, that's you know that you're you're battling with a guy two years younger than you who's you know and, and the only thing you have is you're further along in your development it's like uh oh mm-hmm. so it does seem like their second team other than you know but if you're down to raheem anderson and that's the level you can trust you're okay unless they're really worried that Gentry and Percy is like a battle of you know we don't want to start either of these guys. I but think I it's don't a battle think that of makes sense. yeah, I think it's a battle of you have uh, at the other positions all guys that you've seen in prime time, extensive prime time action, and that's the one spot that you look at and you say we haven't. That doesn't mean that neither of them is talented to, enough to do the job, but uh, if you're a team that's played for a championship you want to throw some experience into that competition. I, I mean, Percy started against Rutgers, and I know people just be like, ah, Rutgers. But he started at Rutgers, and the one thing that team had was edge rushers. Now, they weren't great run stoppers, right? Aaron Lewis was the guy we recruited, right? There's a guy uh-huh. who, was, who was committed to Michigan and then um, and then transferred to Rutgers during the during COVID. Uh, but but he's a he's a real deal as a pass rusher, and so oh, you, he's okay he, against him. Here's what here's what I think you're right. So yeah, Rutgers, do they? How do they feel about the end of the season when they play against Ohio State or they play in the playoffs? They play Penn State. Are you comfortable with where you are? And I think what would enhance that comfort is that they had in the and it may be Percy. It may be Alex Gentry, but I think what they're looking for is to have a veteran guy that has played some football at the Power Five level that you can say, or it just played a lot of football where you can look at it and say, hey, listen, we know we have a guy that if they beat him out, that's a, that's a surefire sign that we are, we are as good as we can be at the tackle position right now. We aren't just relegated to the best of, of two inexperienced guys. So, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll see. Craig, I want to get your, your take. Just, you know, O-line seems to be the, the deal. And um, I don't think you're going to see El Hadi, Crippen, Prebay, or Miles Hinton on Saturday. I don't, I, I think none you of those. You know. <laughs> I, I think. Play. I mean, they, they've been talking him up. Yeah, uh, but in any event, even if it's two or three guys, two or three of those guys not playing, uh, and the offensive line still looks competent, I yeah. think there's a lot of reason to feel good about going into the season because that helps some with your with your quarterbacking also, which seems to be and I, and completely problematic. Teams, like we won't see them together. I can we can pretty much mm-hmm. bet we won't see them together because they had a draft. So right. It's like they'll, that's they'll, what I mean. So yeah. I mean, if you, if you take the offensive line you've got right now, which is shortened by injuries, you divide them in two, and they still look okay. Okay, you know, it, if you know, it's you know, there's reasons to believe well, it'll be a good season. Okay, but I'm not skeptical. I'm skeptical because yeah. we, wanna, I, we can move on to the other line right now because it's like mm-hmm. the we have the best starting four in the country, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and after that, Benny's hurt. You're not going to yeah. see him. Pierce mm-hmm. was on crutches. I'm guessing you're not going to see him. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Ike Luna, that's the guy that was a development dude, and we've gotten one sentence on him. Alessandro Lorenzetti, they haven't even mentioned him. I mm-hmm. don't know who's playing defensive tackle. They were playing, um, they were moving over uh, Eno Etta from defensive end. Right. And, you know, that's that's who you're playing against at that point. Yeah, the Etta thing, it seems like that may be uh, – real that he'll he'll be slotted at two spots now I they are he's that they don't have any tackles maybe it means they have nobody else the yeah. they did there is a lot of noise about the kid from kent state yeah, uh, they, in the uh, transfer portal who's a is you know, i'm blocking on his name yeah they're they're gonna they're uh, as i said earlier, cj west i think yeah, yeah they're gonna target a defensive tackle uh in the portal for sure uh yeah. you know what you got in ray sean benny it is iffy to say the least after that i think you you feel more um comfortable and confident where you are at the edge where tj guy i think they think is 
mm-hmm. is a guy ready to be in that rotation. Yeah, um, Ine, Inoeta uh, is a guy who they think is going to be a, a, a guy too. I think they see some guys who are ready to step up there, not as certain beyond Rayshon Benny at at defensive tackle, and that was part of what made them so good last year was they were able to keep those guys fresh. So they played in the fourth quarter like they were in the first quarter still. It was kind of a little bit of a catch-22 because I think, uh, you know, you had guys like Mason Graham and, and Kenneth Grant a little bit early on, like, you know, snaps, whether it was like snap-wise. But then by the time you get to the end of the season, you're realizing this really helps. So your stats aren't what the other guys may have, but you're winning a championship. You're still looking like a first-round pick. Oh. And I think they see the value of adding to that mix, and they're going to try to uh, as well. I'll tell you one guy I like who just entered the portal is Simeon Barrow, Michigan State's defensive tackle, who was in the portal oh, la- uh, for a moment, and now he's back in again. I don't, I don't. I'm guessing they're not probably going after that, or he's probably looking to go to Alabama or something. But that's a. I, I love. We we've watched his tape a bunch. I like that guy. Real quick, guys. Uh, Brian, uh, start with you. Did you see any of the? Did you see any of the Penn State or Ohio State? We, they don't even play Penn State, so that's not as relevant. But you see any mm-hmm. of the Ohio State spring game or? Any of the I outtakes did. from it? I did not. And what about either of you guys? You yeah, no, I watched the game. Or? Yeah. What did you think? Yeah. I think that their defensive line pushed their offensive line around, and it made it really hard to tell anything. Their quarterbacks were thrown at the chest to defenders. Um, I think that, you know, at the by the end of the season, maybe they've got something in, in Julian saying, uh, but right now he looks kind of skinny, and um, he's a lot. He's a big ball of talent, but I – I think Ohio State does not look that different than last year's Ohio State. Like after they made all those changes and they put all this money into the offseason, the the offense is very Chip Kelly. I mean, they were running bash a whole bunch. They're running a ton of zone reads. They're gonna do that with uh um what's the K State uh Will Howard. You're gonna do that with him. Uh-huh. And you know, you gotta do that with uh uh some of the other players they have on that roster right now, but I mean, I would say that they're probably very similar to Michigan right now, where the offensive line needs to come together a little bit. And I mean, they're experienced, but they're the same guys as last year. And they were just getting completely pushed around by the defensive line, who's good. It's hard to say anything about getting pushed around by that defensive line because everyone gets pushed around by yeah. JTP and Sawyer and all those dudes. I thought their Ohio State secondary was excellent. Thought their whole defense looked pretty good. Probably be better than last year's defense. Uh, but yeah, what Seth said is right. Their offensive line was, you know, problematic. The yeah, the quarterback play I think will be better than people were saying. I saw a lot of commentary that it's a disaster. I didn't think it was a disaster as as even with the interceptions. But I, I they're not. They are similar to Michigan right now, I would say. I think that's a fair commentary. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, yeah. fellas. Looking forward to the spring game and seeing your spring game recaps. Uh, I, I do want to get your take on the hockey departures next week, uh, Brian. Oh, yeah. some, some optimism that they would have a bunch of returnees and sounds like instead uh, many of the guys, they thought there was a good chance of returning, decided to go pro instead. Uh, so we will talk about what that means uh, next week, in addition to recapping the spring game. Looking forward to it. As always, folks, we appreciate your time here on the MGO Blog Roundtable. We have to jet. We'll be back tomorrow here on the Michigan Insider. Be sure to tune in. John, you bacon and more. And so we'll see you then here on the Michigan Insider on Sports Talk 1050 WTK, the ticket, the official voice of the University.